Hello and welcome to another edition of After the Whistle, Wednesday, April 17th. The months just go by so fast, so fast, so fast. I'm here, Todd's here. We got a special little guest with us, Maddie. Yeah. Maddie's here on her iPad. <laughs> What's up, Maddie? You know, <laughs> That's your camera right there. <laughs> Oh, man, the sun's finally out. It's been some, a little chilly today, but it's been nice the past couple of days. Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. Uh, kids, go to prom. It's, well, I was talking to one of the kids I had in class. I was asking him if he's going to prom this year. He's like, yeah. And I told him, just go to prom. I guess if, yeah. if you don't do anything yeah. else in your senior year, go to prom. Or if you don't go to any events throughout your high school career, go to prom. Because right. I know my high school, we had semi-formals and stuff like yeah. that each year and things like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you don't go to any of those, definitely go to prom. It's just a memory that you won't forget. And there are more people that care about you than you actually think in your graduating class. You just won't know because you're not really around those people. So right, right, definitely right. enjoy yourself. You'd be right. surprised how much fun you'll have. Right. That's a true story. I almost didn't go to my prom. And I went last minute. I decided last minute to go, and I had a blast. Yeah, you know, I was yeah. on I was on the court, both both my proms. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. junior and senior prom. But I wasn't expecting it at all. Right. I didn't even think about that stuff. Right, 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 right. So you know, it's just cool to be there, man. Yeah. So all you high school seniors, go to the prom. You'll you'll have fun. You'll you'll have fun. And it's funny too, cause I be seeing some of the kids be shocked when they just see me roaming around. Well, yesterday I was walking to my house. I see one kid I had in class. I'm surprised as you see me walking around the neighborhood. I was like, where the hell else you expect me to be? That's <laughs> why you gotta let them know, man. You're gonna see me the rest of your life for the rest of my life. All right, like, yeah, I'm not out in the birds. I'm out here. We out here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, last night, the playing game, the first playing game was pretty entertaining. Uh, I don't know if you watched the whole thing, but uh, the Lakers and Pelicans was a pretty compelling game. Besides the ending when Zion uh, pulled his hamstring, couldn't finish the game. I was like, damn, because they were saying yeah. right foot sprain, but you kind of know when somebody when somebody goes in the locker room mad, that means it's something more serious than it was, and it's a hamstring. Pulled his hamstring and he's out for Friday. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, he was just upset with everything, you know, him playing well this year <laughs> compared to his whole career so far. Right, and you know. And they had a chance, too. Just the universe <laughs> reminding you what you should have been doing and, and reminding you now what you need to continue to do in order to continue to be great. So um, I thought they almost did everything right. Damn. Their biggest Achilles heel is their shooting. And I feel like if Zion would have just shot a couple threes, it would open it up because they only made nine threes for the game. And that was the only issue they really had because they outplayed the Lakers this game compared to the other night. But their division was that second quarter. They, yeah. they, just had a, they had a terrible second quarter. They only scored, they got outscored by uh, 18 points, 34 to 16. They was like four of like 20 in, the, in that second quarter. Like nothing went right in that second quarter. Their defense wasn't that stout. They picked it up in the third, but then dug themselves in a hole. Uh, and then, you know, Brandon Ingram, man, I'm... I know he came back from injury, but man, he looked like a shell of himself. Like, he just, I don't know, they look, like their half-court offense, just, it, it's just like, I'm going to pass it to you, you figure it out. I'm going to pass it to you, you figure it out. They don't have, they don't have nobody that can make their life easier, like get them easy bookings. It's they, like they got to go. work too hard to score. There you go. And him coming from injury, we don't know how comfortable or even if he's 100%. Because mm -hmm. the way he's been playing, he doesn't look like he's 100%. So um, hopefully he, he heals properly and, you know, he can perform better. In, well, when they play again? Saturday? Friday. Friday? Friday yeah. yeah. So he can perform better Friday. Yeah. For for the Lakers, on the other hand, this, the, this play it has been pretty much the Lakers' invitational the past since... Yeah, since they started it. They've been in the play-in since, since they started this thing. I, I just find it hilarious because my take on the play-in with the bottom teams is like they've been a mediocre team all year. So it's like, yeah, they won, but, you know... For, Especially media folks, you know, because the, the, the Lakers drive the ratings and all that, similar to the Cowboys and all that. They drive the ratings, so they're going to try to talk themselves into the Lakers making a deep playoff run. But it, it's kind of like when you've watched the team the whole year, when you've seen they've been an inconsistent, mediocre team the whole year, that's, not, that's just not all of a sudden going to change in the playoffs. Even if you have, the, you have two good players on your team, but that's just 
not going to change. Uh, I could see that just because. But, um, yeah, I mean, because I've been playing all year and all season and stuff like that. But I just think they're doing this just to squeeze as much money they can out of the Lakers because no. I don't. I think everybody knows they might not make that that deep run as they did the previous year. Right. Was it last year? Yeah, last year. Yeah, last year. So you know, me, you know, they're, they're businessmen, so they, yeah. they they know how to how to get their money and how how to you know get as as much money as possible in a short amount of time. And so. last year, I think like everything kind of like fell in their favor as far as Matt, as far as like the teams they play because you you win the play and then you, your first round matchup you're playing against a Grizzlies team that was. That was like up here the whole season. Then they yeah. had troubles and everything yeah. was like started spiraling downhill. And then you play the Warriors. It was just like Steph Curry and who else is going to show up. And then so, but now you get to draw the, the Denver Nuggets in the first round. It's like, all right. And, but, you know, they are playing well. So mm, hopefully yeah. they can steal a game or two. Yeah. If, you know, if <clears throat> Anthony Davis plays the way he's been playing. Yeah. Because, you know, him going 20 and 15, that, that, those are great numbers. LeBron mm -hmm. almost having a triple-double, 23-9-9. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Russell, if he could be consistent or just a little bit better than consistent, almost, you know, lower star level talent, yeah. or definitely a, a great third third option. Because him having 21, 6, and 3 is big for the Lakers, especially yeah. when he's um, – facilitating and scoring. Yeah, but my biggest thing with them going up against Denver is, we know you know about Jokic and Murray. This is the problem with Denver is they got two guys that are six ten that absolutely don't need the ball to score. So the and the, you know Hachimura is like probably could cover one of them, but then you still got to figure out how to deal with the other one. So it's kind of like just the, those matchups right there is that's what killed them last year. They had they had. Jokic was going to do his thing, Murray, but those two were pretty much the difference makers. And, I mean, Porter is actually a good, a, not a great defender. Like, he's been a decent defender. Like, he could hold his own. Like, in college, he didn't play no defense at all. Man, he didn't play that many games. Like, he didn't play no defense at all when he first came in the league. Like, now he's, he's started to actually attempt to play defense. So. I mean, he, he understands how to win, just yeah. like the rest of that team that was there last year. Yeah. So, the, you know, they're going to be hard to beat against anyone. Yeah, yeah, especially in that altitude. Yeah, the altitude <laughs> and the experience. So we just got to see how it goes. Yeah, and, and when you're trying to repeat and people, like, still, like, have doubts about you, that that's just a little more motivation that you need right there. Uh, man, man look like the end of, it looks like the end of a run for the Warriors. Man, that game was bad last night. Looks like a lot of question marks going for this team. In the off season, it might be time to you know, make some adjustments with uh, with guys they bring in, but yeah, that that was just not a good show. That but that was basically who they've been all season. That's uh, that's what it been. This, nah, that that was, performance. That was that was bad, man. Yeah. I was watching it on mute. I was listening to music at the same time, right. and I, every time I looked up, it was a turnover. <laughs> Oh. They legit gave. They only had 18 turnovers, but they were bad turnovers. I think most of them all came in the first half too. Yeah, they were just getting ripped. Then one one time I seen Steph try to split, and he just like lost the ball. Yeah. And I was just like, man, yeah, this ain't going yeah. well. Clay can't. Clay couldn't buy a bucket. Mm -mm. Yeah, they just kind of just gave that game to him, man. It wasn't. It, it wasn't like they um. It, it wasn't even like Sacramento took it. It was just yeah. a good game. It, it was a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Like, Sacramento definitely took it from him, but they snatched it from him. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Golden State definitely handed it to him. Yeah, yeah. So. Sacramento just seized the opportunity, seized the home court advantage because they had um, Ellis play, was playing out of his mind, knocking down threes, playing good defense. Uh, Murray, I mean, he has these games. <laughs> no, I like how you how you pronounce Murray. He's like Murray. <laughs> Yo, he's had these he's had these type of games all season. It's been like in the season they'll have. I think he had like a game where he had, where he hit like twelve threes or something like that. And yeah, he's been doing this like it's sporadic all season. So it ain't a surprise that they had this performance. It's just surprised that they were so good last year and this year not the same but granted Malik Monk is out so that kind of you know put a hamper on their offense but still they were home they got the win at home and now they got a chance to get that uh, eighth and final spot which is you know I, I saw a stat that said they, they're like 0-5 against uh, the Pelicans 
and, it, and none of the games been close. Who, who's on five? The Kings. The Kings are on five against the Pelicans? Yeah. Well, hopefully they change that fortune because the way they're playing, they should be perfectly fine. Yeah, I saw the stat. It said like, they said like the games all was like double-digit wins by the Pelicans, too. So I, I don't know if it's a matchup thing or it looks like it was one of those things. The team that has your number or something. But, yeah, they got the chance to, uh, to clean that up this Friday. And then for the Warriors, they got dudes with contracts. And they got to figure out what to do with Clay. They got a whole lot of questions marks going into this offseason, but that's kind of what happens in basketball. You kind of see the team at their highest, and then when they're at their lowest, they're at their lowest. And, you know, this offseason allows them to actually breathe. Unless mm-hmm. that's going to do Team USA and all that. Yeah, but, he um, he's on Team USA. All right, but, but, that's, him, though. but that's different element. But, like, yeah. everybody, they've been in the playoffs how many years in a row? Yeah. yeah. Damn, man. They, they, they might have missed one year. Yeah, one year. Like That was like the year before they won the finals, 2021. Yeah, but then you win the finals the next year, so yeah. it's like you were gearing up. So it's one of those things like when you actually get to actually relax yeah. and weigh out your options. Yeah, because in their six years, in that six year span, or seven year span, won the finals, lost the finals, missed the playoffs, won the finals, Second round, second round they lose, and then this one. So that's kind of like yeah. So <laughs> well, and now you get to find kind of like when LeBron was able to finally relax yeah. one summer. So now you get to wear your options and see if you really want to try to make another push. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, other playing games happening today: Philly and Miami should be a good one because these are two teams that kind of Philly kind of picked it up down the stretch after when. Ob- they, yeah, they picked it up after the stretch. They started playing a lot better down the stretch. Miami was just like, they picked it up, then they went down, they picked it up again, so they don't have Terry Rozier tonight. But the Sixers got MB playing tonight, so it should be it should be a good matchup between these two just because both of these teams, you kind of know what you're going to get from them, or you should kind of know what to expect uh, from their style of play and what they're going to do tonight. So it's, a, it's up in the air. I don't even know who's going to win, but I it's mean, up in the air. <laughs> I, you know, them not having Rozier is a tough, a tough one because you know he creates shots on his yeah. own. Yeah. One of the few that doesn't need help doing that. And um, <laughs> the Sixers getting the, the Sixers having him be playing is the reason why we even talk about the Sixers for the most part. Right. So um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a good game. I got the Sixers get, getting this just because I don't think. And, and Bean has more pride than this. So I just feel like Especially, he's Especially yeah, missing all these games when you're at the bottom, when you were like, when you were top four team when yeah, you were there. Yeah, so I think he has more pride in this. So I think he just wants to show like he's still in B regardless yeah. if he's 100% or 70 or 80%. And I read something that said uh, the biggest issue with not having Rozier is like somebody that could match um, Tyrese Maxey. Uh, he, he could guard Maxey and Maxey could guard him. So that kind of like even it out. But now... They don't really, you know, we don't look at um, Tyler Hero as no defensive stopper or anything like that. Or I mean, you could put you could oh, put Jimmy on. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's probably your, the best player. Your, your, your primary scorers are Embiid and Maxi, anyways. Yeah. So you want to neutralize at least one of those. So I put a best defender on one of them, and yeah. need, none of them can cover Embiid. So. <laughs> Unless Tobias Harris decides to have some type of breakout game or something I mean, like that, but he, you know he's gonna give you consistent fifteen to twenty anyway, so yeah. like, you kind of gotta chalk that up. That's yeah. just kind of Tobias Harris. So. <laughs> yeah. so let's see. I'm gonna definitely tune in for that one. Man. And then the Hawks versus the Bulls, which is kind of like the battle of the mediocres, and I mean. This game, I think this, I think this game is relegated to NBA TV. I don't know if it is. Let me double check that. But it's just two teams that are probably gonna lose, the, lose in the first round by either getting swept or probably losing, winning one game in the next round. Cause oh, you talking about the Hawks and Bulls? Yeah, the um. the, the, the toilet bowl game. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if a bull fought a hawk. <laughs> I'm picking the bull. So, uh, yeah, that's so why I'm going with, with this matchup. And, yeah, you know, some teams, they're just playing for entertainment purposes. They're just playing just help try to make a profit for this season, yeah. even though some of these franchises be taking L's. Yeah. So hopefully they can get their money back and, and make a, make this game exciting. And I'm just looking at them. I'm looking at both of them. 
they're just not good basketball teams. 39 and 43 and 36 and 46. That's my point about the East don't need this. Like people probably <laughs> forgot the East was even playing with the with the little playing game right. just because the other ones are so competitive and they mean way more. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. So Cause think about it. The Lakers were like in like ninth or tenth seed in like a week or two ago, weren't they? The, yeah. Like they, they were and then all of a sudden what they seven seed now? Like yeah. that's interesting. That's you know what I mean? That's exciting. Yeah. And they had a winning record. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. Like he was seven through ten, they all had winning records in the West. These dudes don't even. And the, they don't even belong in the NIT. And the West is a hotter conference too, so it's like, it, 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 make it make sense. Yeah, don't get me started. The only positive I I I'd give the Bulls is Kobe White had a great year. Yeah, I like yeah, Kobe White. Yeah, Kobe he White. he, he, he get buckets, so I think he might be. Candidate for Player of the Year because I think he's averaging. He was averaging like 19 points this year. You mean improved? What I said. He said Player of the Year. Oh yeah, most improved. <laughs> most <bad>. improved. <sighs> all this, yeah, all this high school stuff. Me, <laughs> in my brain too much. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, we got some matchups in the playoffs. We just gonna go through them real quickly. <laughs> um, we got. All right, so. In the East, we got Orlando and Cleveland. We got, well, the Knicks are to be determined. El Phoenix, Phoenix and Minnesota. So those are, those are some of the matchups right now. The Celtics are obviously going to play the winner of whoever um, comes out. And then we got the Indiana Pacers, Milwaukee Bucks, Dallas, and, L and the lovely Clippers, which is probably going to be the most intriguing matchup of the first round. And then, I don't know if you saw, but Giannis is going to be out for the first round because of, they say a foot injury, but I think I think he got a messed up Achilles just because of the way he got hurt that last game, so. Man, you got them soccer shoes he playing in, they don't even look comfortable. <laughs> I've never, I've never bought a pair of Giannis's, and I try to give all low-top basketball students a chance. And, and yeah, just not that all those, but um, that's unfortunate. Yeah, he's um, he's having a rough playoff series the past two years, man. Like, hopefully he gets his body healthy, but he has to do the rehab and yeah. might might need to change your diet, man. You don't want you don't want them brittle bones, man. Especially, you definitely don't want foot problems because right. those linger. And it takes a while to get, get rid of those. So. And, that, and that's just a team that everything everything's gone downhill since they replaced the coach. Yeah, and his nickname, he should be able to help your bone issues and your feet problems. <laughs> since he is the doc, right? right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you say? Oh, man. Uh, Clippers and Mavericks, that one, man, that one probably going to go to seven games just because you got two, the way Kyrie and Luka have been playing the last two months of the season, it's been under the radar, but them dudes, they've been the highest scoring duo in the league the past couple months, and it's, one, they're both healthy, two, they got the they got the right pieces around them, and, and three, they're healthy. All right, um, no disrespect to anybody else, you know, that are playing in the playoffs, but that series probably has, like, I want to say the most star power on the court because you have Luca, you got Kyrie, yeah. then you got Paul George, you got James Harden, then you got Kawhi, and you got Westbrook. They all could be on the same on the court at the same time. Right, right, right. That's kind of wild. So yeah. I think that's gonna be probably the best. You know what I mean? Series we're gonna see in the first round. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah, definitely gonna be the most entertaining one. Yeah. Phoenix and Minnesota might come second to that. Yeah, one. I was thinking that, but you know, because you know, Minnesota still is improving, mm -hmm. and we still don't know what, what they're gonna do. We know we we have a a small sample size of what Anthony Davis is gonna do, which is yeah. always is positive, but we don't know what um, Gobert and in Towns. Yeah, in Towns. I, I don't even know if he's been cleared to play. Oh, see, exactly. Yeah, he's, so, been, he's been out for a while. Yeah, so the, com the, the combination that's allowed them to, to be top in the West, mm -hmm. one of the top teams in the West, isn't even playing yet. So we don't even know what's going to happen now. And, and maybe now, you know, with the Suns, it's a playoffs. I think all the guys are actually healthy now. I think they're all healthy. We're all healthy going into the playoffs. So maybe we could kind of see what they could have been or what they could do. But, yeah. Um, yeah, with the Suns, though, like, I would love to see, like, that 
the storybook. They all just come together, right. kumbaya, and right. they all just figure each other out. But are they even, like, cool oh, like yeah. that off the court yeah. to, like, not be able to, to play in games but still yeah. practice and stuff and still have that camaraderie understanding of the game that when you get on the court, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Have a good flow because the Suns season's been kind of weird to me. Very. It's been an odd season. For Very, me. Yeah. yeah. I've been looking forward to see what they was going to do, and it's just been just rocky yeah. and up and down. Yeah, you're not the only one that thought that. Okay. <laughs> a lot All of right, people cool. A lot of people have, have as well. So, <laughs> yeah, playoffs is here, man. Playoffs, best time of the year. We'll see what happens this year. Celtics, you know, as, as everyone says, the biggest. <laughs> The the biggest opponent to the Celtics is the Celtics. That's uh, that's their biggest uh, issue right there mm-hmm. in this playoff. So, but they've been they've been saying good things at their practices. They've been going hard at the practice. So, it's got to put it on the court. You know me. I, this season, I, I watch you know a few games here and there in the Celtics just to make sure they're still still well oiled machine. And they've been dropping 20, 30 bombs on people. So yeah. All I'm just waiting to see what they do in the playoffs. Same, same, same. And, yeah, and people were making a lot about them losing games the last couple games of the season. And it was just like these dudes, they already, they had nothing to play for. Like the last, they had nothing. They clinched, they clinched like a month before the season and they, they literally had nothing to play for except just, you know, staying, staying in tune and all that. But it was kind of like, you know, it's, they're ready for the playoffs. They got they got yeah. the one seed. They clinched the playoffs. Their playoff berth. It's like time for the young guys to get in and let the vets rest until the playoffs get here. You know what's wrong with that? Just make sure y'all stay sharp. Facts, just, facts, just, facts. You know, just stay sharp and stay in shape. Make sure your wins up. Definitely. All right. Uh, let's go WNBA real quick. The WNBA had their draft Monday. Yeah, they had their draft Monday. To no surprise. Who went number one? It was it was Caitlin Clark who went, yeah Caitlin Clark went number one. Yo, know, you know what's funny? Cause a lot of a lot of the players are so used to seeing them in like sweatpants and just hoodies and stuff like that. So like when they're in dresses and all that stuff, you just get like kind of look like that. That don't even look like the same person you're used to seeing all the time. But it was kind of like yeah, this. <laughs> but that's another thing. But. <laughs> Yes, people, these young ladies are women. Yes, they look like women once they get all dolled up and they want to look nice. Yeah, right. It's not surprising. That's, but. Ba- that's basically what Because I've had even some of the players from the high school level, and I've seen them like out in like at prom last year when I saw some of them, I'm like, I don't look like the same person I see every day in class. I'm like, okay. And, uh, too, like, makeup be doing wonders for some people, though. Like, we don't have, I'm, yeah, we don't really have that luxury, to be honest. Most I've seen guys do is get their eyebrows done. I think it's weird. But to each his own, I respect it, because some of these guys be having trade tracks <laughs> over across their face. And, it's, and also, no, we can't sit there for hours. Say new makeup on her face. That'd be that'd be taking forever. I, I mean, I would just feel uncomfortable if I gave somebody a hug and my whole face was on their shoulder. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just odd to me. But you know, it's to each his own. You know, the women look nice when they do it, but just just don't 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 be too cakey and powdery. Like we, we could we could see it. Plenty of my white shirts have been ruined due to makeup. Yeah, all, all on your collar too. Yeah. Now you look all suspicious. <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't even know how he got here. Back to the WNBA draft, <laughs> but um, yeah, Caitlin Clark went number one. Cameron Brick went number two. Camila Cardosa, number three. Uh, Rakea Jackson at number four. J.C. Sheldon, number five from Ohio State. Aaliyah Edwards, number six. Angel Reese at number seven. So we got the two four. At teammates now at in Chicago with Angel Reese and Camila Cardoso. That's gonna be a, a heck of a front court. That's an interesting combination of personalities too. <laughs> should, should, should be a good time over there with that. Uh, right, Aly- Aly- Alyssa Pilly at um, she's from Utah at number yeah, eight. Yeah, she's a killer. All right, all right. She's Samoan. Yeah, she's a Samoan shorty. At some point, we got to talk about these Samoans and their athleticism. Yeah. <laughs> know that dude, Vita Vea, from the books, the D-tackle? Dude was a hot running back in high school. Yeah, be like that. And he was the same size, and he was fast. 
Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, Some wild things. Right. Uh, Layla Lacan from France and Marquisha Davis. And yeah, so, I mean, it was an overall great event. I didn't watch it because I don't like watching drafts. I don't, I, I don't find nothing amusing about drafts, but it drew over 2.2 million views. Uh, I, think the highest, I think that was the highest rated draft in WNBA history. And new wave of talent. Maybe this is, people talk about this could be the draft class that could help the profits of the WNBA, that could help with the expansion of the WNBA to get more teams. So what, what, we'll they, what they really need to do is, because I just noticed they have three rounds now, which is dope. <laughs> I don't think they always had three rounds. I think it used to be one and two. Mm -hmm. So, um, you're giving these girls the opportunity to make a team, but a lot of these later picks don't stick. Some yeah. of these high picks don't even stick. Right. Based on the personnel and what they need and how effective they are and how effective, the, you know, the front offices and coaches feel yeah. they yeah. can be on the court. How come they don't have, like, a G League for the WNBA? Yeah. At least four teams. Right. You get what I'm saying? Each team doesn't need one because that's a lot of money, but if you want to continue to help this game grow in the female aspect, mm -hmm. some of these girls that are nice still should be able to play and be get, getting paid decently instead of just having to go across the water the whole year or be a globe trouter or play in these lower f female leagues that yeah. are just starting up where you can just keep everybody in-house in a hub because they call up a lot of these women again anyways after a few years from overseas and stuff mm -hmm. like that too. So why not just try to have that idea? And these investors, man. How many billionaires are women? There's, there's a few. And they need like, some, they need yeah, some more but you know, I get it. Like you, you want women to invest in their own stuff, but yeah. there are a lot of men that could just help the women's sport yeah. because it's not like it's a bad product. It's not a bad product. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just the NBA's are investing so much and they're still, they've been losing money from it. So it's kind of like you keep losing money every year, every year. They're, well, just, they're just waiting for that. They're waiting for like the magic magic bird moment to kind of like take them to the place where they need to be because that's I mean, yeah kind of having it with the you know with the caitlin clock yeah in south carolina yeah that was like one player versus a whole regime <laughs> like a whole region yeah which is dope yeah. so i feel like they could capitalize on that mm -hmm. like i'm i'm all, i always wonder like damn they don't even let the girls really breathe take a vacation like the draft was like right around the corner like, oh, yeah, a week, week after two, yeah, a week, week after, after so it's like yeah they capitalize I, that's why i felt like it might have been a week after so you capitalize on that because the ratings everybody gonna watch it because yeah. you, you still remember caitlin clark if it would have happened two two months ago Two months from now, you're not gonna remember Kate Clock that as quickly as you will anybody else. You yeah. know what I mean? So they have ways to gain on the momentum of what's going on right now. So I definitely think they should capitalize. And it all, also all depends who they got in their marketing departments. If they got some some bright people in their marketing in the league's marketing departments, I think they can. I mean, gonna, all they can just hire some people like us. You can contact us. Right. You see, we're very intellectual people, yeah. and we break things down to a T. Yeah. To even the person with them. What was it? Minutest brain? <laughs> minute? <laughs> yeah, a brain that even minute could understand. Yeah, yeah. Give us a call. We here. We take meetings, Zoom meetings, all that. In person meetings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We do all that. We do all that. But uh, congratulations to all. And I, I believe the I believe the league year starts next month. The season, I believe, it starts next month. Yeah, we need we need commercials for that. So you know, me and this booger right here could watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we go to Athletes Corner. Yeah, we got the Lint Tech girls basketball team here. We had them talk about this season. They're only losing one senior on that team that had a good year, won a, won a playoff game, lost to the eventual state champion. Well, you know, you know, ain't no shame in that, but they had to go all the way to Cape Cod to play their game. To, oh, okay, Cathedral won. Oh, okay. You talking, talking who? Lintech girls. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yo, shout out to them, though, just in general, because, you know, they've been improving and improving every year. There was a time where, like, they used to get laughed at. No disrespect, but, like, you know, few, what, four or five, you know, like six years ago, five, six years ago. So I'm definitely happy on the improvement. Yeah, yeah, and like I said to them, next year. We got a lot of, a lot of, got a lot of uh, production coming back, so we expect the big things for them next year. Make a deep, 
get two more wins, a couple more wins, and see you make that state title run if yeah, that's possible. That'll be dope. That'll be dope. Very dope. So check this out, and we're going to come back and got, got some other stuff to talk about. Heard, I heard uh, Haney and Garcia was uh, tussling at Barclays. That's not surprising. Pe Pedro got the scoop on that. We'll be back. Hello and welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner. And today I am joined by the Lynn Tech Lady Tigers. How is everyone doing? Good. 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 We got to get some on camera nerves out of them. But uh, before we start, we, everyone got to introduce themselves. Mine is Coach over here because I think she Coach forgot her name. So, <laughs> players, and introduce yourselves. I'm Allison. Last I'm name, a, too. I'm um, Allison Morales. <laughs> I'm Aaliyah Balquez. I'm Angelie Spiegel. <laughs> you forgot your name? Oh my goodness. I'm Alina Sanchez. I'm Alina Williams. I'm Kayla Rivera. And I'm Camila Rufino Santos. Cassidy Caleb. Cassidy remembered her name. <laughs> and, we have, and we have Coach Caitlin here. Coach, how are you? I'm great. Yeah, Thank you. That, that's that's good. That's good. That's good. Heck of a season your ladies had this year, huh? We did. Um, how, just overall, just you know, when you just sit back and look at everything the team accomplished, just how happy were you with the product that the team that you put out this season? Yeah, I was super proud of them all season long. I mean, they bought into our system, defense first, um, and we put it all together. And when it mattered most, we performed. Yeah, and it's kind of been a build up, you know, getting to this point where you got where the ladies can, you know. Make a run at a state at a state championship, get a taste of making it, getting a state tournament win. Just all the good stuff that comes with the process of basketball. Just you know, in this process, the last several years, how's it just been for you? Seeing you've been coaching for a while with the team, just like the progress the program is starting to make. Yeah, so I think um, I mean years back we we built our what we wanted um, our again defense first mentality to be, and we worked on it. And then the past like three years or so, we've really been starting to you know get some players that have been working on in the off season. Um, um, we've had some tournament uh, bids the past few years, and mm -hmm. I, I felt like we really, um, Coach and I both thought that this was the year that we had a chance to really um, get that tournament win. So we were super proud that we were able to do that. Yeah, and it wasn't easy, too, because you had to travel like two, three, I don't know how, was it three, <laughs> three hours? Or? It was like two hours, uh, yeah. two, You had to drive two hours, and that's just not, that's, when you drive two hours and then you got to get yourself rejuvenated for a game, that's like not an easy thing to do. But uh, they came in there prepared, and probably not a lot of people probably thought they were going to win that game just for the travel sakes. But um, how how would how was it? Um, how were you guys able to? How were you ladies able to pull that one off? Yeah, so I think we're used to traveling. I mean, the past couple of years we've had some pretty long drives. Um, we. We like the adversity, and um, the girls were ready for it. We got there nice and early, and, and we got loose. And um, I think we just like to prove people wrong. I don't mm -hmm. think that um, people expect a whole ton from us, so um, we wanted to go out and show people what we're made of. Did they, did they, was it like the feeling, what you expected, just the way – the, the way they played in that game um, and how they competed and how they were just able to execute the game plan? Yeah, for sure. And we had we had a different game plan, so we watched a lot of film on them ahead of time. We knew that they had two big players that we needed to stop, so we um, switched off our uh, full-court man press and we played a triangle in two. Mm -hmm. um, our senior, Leah, killed it that game, of course, and stopped their um, best player. And then um, Camilla and JV worked hard on the other players, and then we all we locked in in our triangle, and we just... It was nice. Yeah, uh, let me get to the players. We're gonna start off with Allison. Had a uh, had stuff in the stat sheet this year. A lot of big games with just uh, you know you get 30 points, you get 12 rebounds, you get five blocks, you get three steals. Um, when you, coming into the season, what was kind of your goals that you set for this season that you were able to have this productive season? Can you repeat that question? What were your, what, goals? your goals? Your goals coming into the season, how um, how did they translate to the court? How were you able to make them come come to life? One, two, one. Yeah. Um, working off season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who'd you work with? To... Who'd you work with in the off season? Uh, by yourself. By, by yourself. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's mm -hmm. that's that's good. That's good. Uh, what do you think was kind of your best game that really stood out that you in your eyes? Probably the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, why was that? Um, I think defensively and offensively, it was a good game uh, for all of us. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so you're the lone senior. Uh, how was it just being the only senior on the team and 
kind of the upper, the elder statesman? Um, honestly, I just used it as to be a leader and to kind of set a role model for all my young ones. And I didn't really look at it as just being the only one to shine. I just kind of blended in with everybody. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of had to be a role model. Yeah, well, what was the kind of like the season highlight or the season, the season high moment for you and for yourself? Um, I think all of our memories is a highlight. Like, mm -hmm. I can't specifically say one because they were all beautiful yeah. in their own ways. Yeah, yeah. So. Which game, though, would you, would you say stood out the most? Which game do you think stood out the most? Um, I think in the beginning of the season, Shashin. It kind of just mm, proved yeah. how hard we can play and if we really want it, we can get mm -hmm. it kind yeah. of thing. Okay, okay. Uh, Miss Bingham. <laughs> now, now you know you get you get a lot of uh, people put a lot of expectations on you because of your last name and um, the family tree of basketball players that came through your family. But um, how are you how are you just able not to just let that affect your game? How are you able to just play your game and you know set your own kind of legacy? Um, talk loud. Because. <laughs> um, I think of it like, um, I... Oh, you just understand that you got to go out there and play. Yeah, I just play to play. Like, I don't let, you know, what people set, like, their expectations. Mm -hmm. I don't let it, like, bother me because I'm my own person. My dad was his own person. Mm -hmm. Like, all my family, we're all different yeah, in yeah. different ways. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, coming into this season, what, um, what was kind of some of the, like, the goals that you had set for this season that you wanted to accomplish that you were able to do so this year? Um, be a leader. Um, like, try and, like, win something. Like, maybe, like, set a, the goal. Maybe it could be, like, like we are um, like co-champs okay, with um, our um, conference. The conference co-champs? Co yeah. Okay. And that was very much it. And really. you made, you got two league all-stars? Three? Three. Three league all-stars. Uh, how big is that? Just, you know, for getting those three league all-stars and having the, the players be acknowledged for what they did? Yeah, for sure. I mean, winning or co-champions this year got us three, and I think that's important. Um, and hopefully in the future we can have even more. I mean, I know that we... Um, we have a lot of girls that are working hard, and it's it's nice for them to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And and now there's a tar there's going to be a target mm -hmm. uh, on their backs going into next season because once like you got a lot of returnees coming back, mm -hmm. uh, is that that's a good thing though? Just shows they got to work harder this summer just to have a better record than they did last year. Uh, and that game against Cathedral, uh, well, I mean, losses happen. <laughs> it happens. It happens. That's basketball. But what did everybody learn from that game? Because once again, that, that was the defending champs. Well, now mm -hmm. they won it again. But going up against the champs, what, what did you learn? What did the team learn? And what do they have to do to get to that point that Cathedral was at? So I think even just watching their warm-ups, honestly, we were all looking and just um, we could see the work that they put in. We could see, you know, the skills that they have. And so I think something to look up to that we can work towards in the off offseason. Um, but then also I was super proud of our effort the entire game. Um, we fought probably the hardest that we fought all season long, and I know the score might show something different. But yeah. um, for the state champions that they are, um, I thought that we really worked really hard and had a – a pretty good performance. Yeah, for each of you ladies, I can answer too. What was kind of what was the learning? What was something you learned from that game that you're going to take into the off season as you get ready for next season? Mm. We can start all the way down there for the folks that haven't talked and bring it all the way down. Don't be shy. <laughs> uh, what what was uh what was something you learned from that game that you can take into the off season to help, to work on your game so next year you can try to get to the point where Cathedral is. Um, I'm going to try to, you know, focus on my dribbling and my defense. Um, even I've noticed that even if they're, like, big and have more skills, you know, mm -hmm. we can, you know, yeah. I get what you're saying. <laughs> Pass it on down. <laughs> I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> Can you ask a question? Yeah, uh, what did you? What was something you learned from uh, the Cathedral game that's going to help you in the, with the off-season training, and it's so you could try to get to the point where Cathedral is at? Um, from that game, I noticed that they 
probably put in a lot of reps in their off season. Mm -hmm. I think something I could take on my off season is lots of reps like they do, lots of whether it's shooting, dribbling, it's all the above. They just were all around good players. I think all of us putting in the same in the off season, we could possibly get there. <laughs> um, what I could say, like they said, like work off, work on in the off season. Maybe like set a goal for yourself, like how much you want to work out, like mm -hmm. things like that. But what I've learned is like how their hustle is. Like they never give up. Yeah. And how much they put their effort into. So, yeah. Um. I mean, well, you're graduating. Yeah, I kind of yeah. wish you guys the best. So <laughs> yeah. I hope you guys um, just. Work in the off season on your mm -hmm. fundamentals and just work out. She'll be there in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I'd say the same. Work off season. Keep trying to get better. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, newly renovated gym helps. Uh, yeah. yeah. How is it just not playing on the rubber floor no more? Mm -hmm. It feels like everyone was happy with the with the wooden floor being put in there, and just the whole facility being updated. The crowd started to show up uh, a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. The floor yeah. is beautiful. We definitely had to adjust to it. It's a different kind of feeling, but, um, you know, we have the advantage because we're in there every day, and um, I think it's it's great for the city. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful mm -hmm. ar arena, facility, whatever we want to call it, yeah. <laughs> um, and um, probably the nicest gym in the city, so hopefully we can get some more people coming in. All right. Um, spring sports, ladies? Spring sports? Any of y'all doing spring sports? Or? A few. No. A few people. A few? Softball. So okay, softball. Track. We have a couple of girls at track meets today. That's why they're not here. Okay, I mean track is good. Keep, <laughs> keeps you in shape. Track keeps you in shape. Uh, also, before you know, we get out of here, we gotta let them go soon. Coach, our coach of the year, our LCTV coach of the year, we gave it to Coach Caitlin. Congratulations. Our defensive player of the year, we gave it to Allison. And then first team, our first team players, Allison and Angie. So. Congratulations. Y'all will be receiving something pretty soon, so just giving you the heads up on that. So um, congratulations on the season. Thank you. Uh, well, looking forward next year. So so next year we got to the round of 32. Now we've got to make a deep mm -hmm. run next year. So well, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. Um, do y'all have social medias y'all want to plug in before we get out of here? Ladies, ladies. <laughs> no, y'all sure? Y'all sure? They plug their social media or everything else, but now that there's real cameras, they don't want to plug it in. I don't know. Uh, this is the Lintech Lady Tigers. Y'all been watching Athletes Corner. We're out of here. Oh, you guys are so fun. <laughs>
Hey, no. He went to UNC Wilmington. Okay. Oh, he went to UNCW. That's went, dope. Went there for two years, and then he went to Clary on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, you know, he said he brought, brought a lot of attention, a lot of notoriety, a lot of wins. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to true Kentuckians, if you want to call them, or people of Kentucky, you know, they want one of their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's all. And, yeah, what? When your time is up, your time is up. And yeah, it's always like. Like, but they, they, want, they want one of their own that has the ability yeah. to keep them. To, to, to bring back to, to relevancy. Level. Yeah, or, keep them relevant. Yeah. Good move for them. Good move for them. Didn't take too long. Because we got, because this transfer portal, I think there's like 2,000 kids, 2,000 names in the transfer portal right now. That I saw, last I saw on the update, which is kind of crazy, but even more players entering their name but, the portal. But. but when you're coaching at certain schools, that doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, guys here, this opens at Kentucky. I'm sure they're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to run to it. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm sure that he's, he's some of the recruits he was going to get that, rec that are committed to him at the other school are probably going to decommit and go and follow him to this school, which is usually how it goes. So, yeah, good. Good for Kentucky. Good for good for you all, folks over there. Um, oh, O.J. Simpson passed away. Condolences, condolences. I mean, if you want a, a polarizing figure, right there, that, that is a polarizing. O.J. is a polarizing figure. His child. I remember his child because I remember that was all over the news. I was in the fifth grade when we heard the verdict because the little teacher A. Ruben. I don't know. I don't know if Ruben. Yeah. Now nah, he graduated. He was one of the, you know, one of the handicapped kids that was in our class, mm -hmm. and his the teacher A, she was, she had it on the little, I don't know if it was like a little TV or a radio, yeah. but we heard the verdict and it was a weird energy in that classroom. Yeah, it was weird energy to to this day because people still, I mean, <laughs> somebody said it best. That was like. People started not trusting the American justice system after that, or they thought it was flawed after that. And a lot of people were just like, oh, where this, you been? <laughs> right, where right, you been right, for right. hundreds of years? Right. Y'all are tripping. Right, right. And then, and the crazy thing is, it's like, innocent until proven guilty. He was found innocent, but a lot of people believed he did it. Even a lot of black folks believed it did, he did it. Well, the only reason they was happy is because all the racism that went on with the police department involved in the case and stuff like that. So they, they were just happy to see a black man beat the system. Well, I'll be honest. When I hear, when I first think of OJ, I just think about the juice that played for USC. Both played for the Bills, right? USC, the Bills. Was my, that was one of my uncle's favorite football players. He talked about, you know, told me a lot about him as a kid. So, like, I don't know. That's the first thing I think about. Like, yeah, whatever yeah. you do in life what you do in life. But and he was kind of like almost like the first, like, NFL superstar. And he was, like, to be, man. like, Jews, get, getting on, like, movies yeah. and, like, Yeah, he was in Naked Guns. He was yeah. in all. I think he might have been in Airplane. Like, I used to watch Naked Guns with my grandmother. Yeah. And if you don't know, that's a, for the younger generation, that's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, damn, what was his name? Something Nelson with the white hair. But, um, yeah, funny comedy. He had little spoofs and stuff, and yeah. he was an airplane and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at him right now. Uh, Frank, Leslie Nielsen, David Crockett, Davy Crockett. Yeah, see. Nordberg, that was who OJ played. Yeah. George Kennedy. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just seeing the people that was like that. But, no, I know. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, he's definitely a superstar, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Man, somebody said somebody said they were at an interracial re wedding when the news of OJ <laughs> passed away. And he's trying to get some jokes off. I'm like, well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Should have left that one alone, mm. bro. You got to read the room. <laughs> he said he did it because... <laughs> Plus, it's just it's just a way to be tasteful. You know what I mean? Certain jokes, I just think I, I just think certain subjects are distasteful when it comes, you know, comedy in, in today's age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think people gotta people gotta let things go. I mean, no, yeah, yeah bro. Some people gotta like, let things go because this is like, like, all right. I mean, he was found he was found innocent, but then y'all got him for some nonsense about like mess, him getting his memorabilia back. Y'all he got eight years for that. That was kind of their way of getting him back. 
Because the system's way of getting him back. It's kind of like. Uh, yeah, he stole, he stole his Heisman <laughs> back or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I would have stolen my Heisman back too. All right. <laughs> right. I work for that. Yeah, but yeah, that's, nah, that's crazy, the reaction to it. And just the reaction to the to the verdict and all that, because uh, all the time and when um, because even the George Zimmerman case, people would tell people would be telling folks, oh, he was get over, he was found innocent. But you tell them, you know, OJ was found innocent, and it's kind of like, oh, that's different. Uh, not really. It's like, yeah. <laughs> not really. <laughs> you just picking and choosing who you want to be mad at for. Yeah, you know, the underlying failings is mostly fair, right. so you know. That's really the excuse. It yeah. comes out of fear. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, Blake Griffin retired. Shout out, uh, uh, shout out to Blake, man. He was an exciting player. Yeah. Just was disappointed when he got traded to the um to the Pistons, Pistons yeah. because he kind of disappeared. And his game didn't flourish the way they thought it was when they yeah. allowed him to do more. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what happened. He was on the Celtics two years, yeah. and they all loved him. Yeah. He, ain't play, he ain't played, but they loved him. Of course. Everybody he's on the a, team he's loved a, him. He's a fun person, but yeah. he, I just felt like he had more to offer in yeah. the league still. Yeah. You know, the league want to go younger and younger and younger. They don't want to keep veterans around to help the young guys. Um, oh, NFL playoffs is about to kick off. The Bruins, let me get this standing here for y'all. The Bruins will be taking on Toronto, so the Bruins avoided playing. Well, what is up with this? Excuse me, y'all. This thing is messing up. <laughs> Trying to bring up the schedule, but my computer messing up. All right. Toronto, Tampa Bay. What kind of matchups are these? Pittsburgh at New York. You act like you watch. St. Louis at Dallas. I don't. <laughs> I don't watch at all. <laughs> Anyways, NHL playoffs is is coming up. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoy it for all you to, for all you hockey hockey lovers. Hockey buffs. Uh, yeah, you hockey you hockey buffs. I hope y'all enjoy it. We can't. I ain't giving y'all no hockey analysis. I'm just telling y'all what's going on. Postseason's about to is starting. We'll we'll get y'all updated if the Bruins make a deep run. Just hopefully they don't do what they did last year and choke. After having a record-setting year, yeah, that was all types of crazy. Yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about it. I to this Haney and Ryan Garcia going at it this weekend. Pedro, they they got in a tussle at Barclays uh, a couple of days ago, didn't they? Yes, they did. Uh, it's fight week. It's going to be exciting. I'm looking for Haney. Fortunate about it, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, Ryan Garcia is talking a lot of trash. Which is great for the sport, mm -hmm. but I think it's a free. So take a look. Yeah, there. Guys, I need space here. I need to bang. Love, love, love. Any time. Any time. The Ryan Garcia is good. Kevin Haney, the best in the world. Best in the world, bar none. Bar none. Ground. Ground. Saturday. No, you better, man. You better hope everybody's still awake. <laughs> in New York, baby. Uh, yeah, right. you, you got you got Haney winning there, Pedro? 100 percent How many how many how long you how how many rounds do you think it's going? I don't think uh it'll be a knockout, but uh unanimous decision, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, my opinion on what I just happened to watch, what just transpired in front of my eyes. I felt more like wrestling. 
Ryan came out with no shirt on. <laughs> I thought he just was getting out the gym. He had pants <laughs> on with a backpack. That was... And then they're like face to face, like acting like they're mad, and they push each other. Then I, yeah, I just thought it was corny. I right. some tickets, man. So nah, I get it, but like you could have made it a little more believable. Like he should, he should have slapped him. Uh, He's yeah. a you should have slapped Danny. You should have slapped him to make it. Don't don't push him in the neck. Slap him. Put him in a chokehold or something, man. Do something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Do something. Just, yeah. Just I, I, get, I get what they were doing. It, it just it like sometimes things just look too like cliche and too set up. You know what I mean? Some things can look. Yeah, exactly, exactly, too scripted. Some things can look more organic. You know, I felt like back in the day, they just understood how to make it more organic. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, yeah, make sure y'all tune in to that one. It's 420, it's going to be on 420, so uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff to do before that. Speaking of, right, we forgot to talk about WrestleMania last week, but I'm, I'm slowly getting back into tuning into wrestling just because of how uh, the storylines are going. And DX is all part of the, like, the creative side of it now. So, oh, word? Yeah, that's why. I, so I watched the clips on, um, on Instagram. I watched the clips on Instagram, and it's kind of like they're, they're trying to make it like the Attitude Era, but just not like the Attitude Era, but it's, it's kind of its own entity and bringing the entertainment back in it. And, and they're doing a pretty good job so far with some of these uh, I mean, I matches mean, and storylines they're doing. They're gonna bring up, they're gonna bring back what DX was famous for. <laughs> hey, I, I got, I got, you know, yeah, got know. it right here. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, you know, it, it can't hurt. It can't hurt. They can, they can change it to something else. Uh, yeah, they, they could. They could. But Cody, Exercise. Cody Rhodes is the new <laughs> champ. Roman, ends Roman, Roman, Roman Reigns' three-year run as a champion, which is like the longest run for any uh, WWE champion. Ever? Yeah, the, yeah, I believe so, yeah. For real? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Good for him. Yeah. I just don't like his hair. Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes. What's wrong with it? I don't know. He got like the white boy face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what else is he supposed to do with it? Get a shag? Get the long hair at the edge? Like. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, man, let's go. <laughs> we got some highlights for y'all. We got spring football. We got. <laughs> got a couple basketball highlights and I put together the top 10 plays. Let's go to that. We're going to get up out of here. Spence critiquing people's hair we don't even understand. Hey, uh, man.
We are back. Oh, um, May Fourth, ladies and gentlemen. May Fourth. We got we got ourselves a little, a little nice thing going on. We're gonna have a Lynn versus Boston, a little All Star basketball game at Lynn Tech. So, more details to come on that. But we got a we got a coach for the Lynn team. Boston, I talked to the guy running for the Boston team. He got his guys. He said he got eight players. So, more, more. We know your birthday's on May 4th. Yeah, let them know, know. Daddy. He's we here know. to talk. He's been mumbling all episode. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, more details to come on that. I just want to throw that out there. So, we might have, like, three games. They're going to be a girls game, and then they might be an undercard game before we get, get it cracking with the Lynn Boston game. So, um, stay tuned for that. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, that's about that's all the time we got here, man. Um, Pedro, we got, you got the games going on this weekend, right, the, from all the other stuff? That's right. Yeah. yeah. First time here, Maddie. Yeah, you just man, that's your camera. You got to wave goodbye to the camera. 